Welcome to the Trust Factor Radio, bringing you interviews and insights to unlock the power of the subconscious mind to create authority, credibility, and trust with your host, the authority architect and best-selling author, Neil Howe. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, Neil Howe, and today my special guest is Chris Ornelas. He is the owner of I See You Now, uh, icnow.com. And after gaining much experience from some of the best in the field in the uh, SEO and web design digital marketing sphere, Chris decided to go out on his own and start his own company. Uh, I See You Now is an SEO, web design, marketing, and social media company based in Austin, Texas. And they work with a variety of businesses located throughout the country from realtors to inspirational speakers and everything in between. Well, excited about uh, what you've got going on here, Chris. Chris Ornelis, welcome to the show. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, I gave a, a brief intro to you, but uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, how come I See You Now came about. Sure. So um, I got started with I See You Now, and by the way, it's spelled E-Y-E, See You Now, instead of the letter I. Um, and that's how also the URL is spelled. And um, the meaning of the name is uh, pretty much a play on words for becoming more visible online. And, um, you know, the, the problem with most clients that need SEO or, or digital marketing overall are not, of course, not visible on the first page of Google um, or anywhere, uh, for the most part, online. So that's the problem they have. And when I started doing this for um, my previous, uh, a previous company that did the same, um, I pretty much learned not only how to uh, figure out what their problems were and show them uh, what their competitors were doing and, um, you know, just eventually build that online presence. Um, that was a problem with a lot of them. A lot of the uh, problems uh, of these uh, potential clients at the time were, uh, you know, not much of a budget. If, if most clients that are looking for SEO means that the problem of not having um, online leads, uh, of, of course, usually equals not much of a budget. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, that was a problem that I was finding is how do you help those people that are, uh, you know, not much of a budget and kind of, you know, just kind of in panic mode. And on top of that, you know, SEO takes quite a while to work depending on the, the industry and um, trying to explain to people that it's not something that's going to happen overnight or definitely not even within a couple of months is already a little frustrating and not what they want to hear. Um, and uh, and I, I've found that trying to make potential clients understand that it's more of an investment rather than uh, just the, the phrase search engine optimization um, helps a little bit just because you know, I, I find that um, nobody wants to hear the technical uh, jargon or anything like that. They just care about business and leads. And um, I've also found that, you know, when you talk to them about what you're going to do or maybe the end of the month of SEO is done and you show them all the technical stuff. They don't, they don't care. They don't understand it. All they hear or want to hear and see is something about leads and bringing them business. So that exactly. was, exactly. Yeah. I say that all the time. I think obscurity is the number one problem that these uh, businesses have. And I love your name. I see you now It's getting seen and found, uh, gives you a chance to, to get in the game and get more business. And also, you know, the bottom line is more calls, more sales, more profits. That's all the business owners care about. They mm -hmm. couldn't care less about any of the technical jargon, like you say. Uh, it's just the results. So talk to me a little bit more about the kind of customers that you serve. I know we've got from anywhere from realtors to inspirational speakers. What do you tend to deal with most? Sure. Well, the... Um, I not, I'm hesitant to say it was my first client because it was, it happened probably the first week that I decided to take that jump and start my own business. And of course I was terrified because it was the first time in my life that I wasn't relying on um, another business to, to uh, provide that paycheck. So I was definitely, you know, like I said, terrified. And I said, well, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is volunteer and network. Um, 
for some reason that just naturally came to mind. And uh, so I looked online and started seeing what, what was out there. And I ran into a nonprofit organization called SCORE. Um, they're nationwide, and I believe it stands for Senior Committee of Retired Executives. Um, and it's pretty much retirees that have been previous business owners in all types of fields, engineering, whatever. Um, and they provide their mentoring skills for free uh, to any to business owners of all ages. Um, and they're, they're pretty big in Austin, and I, and I think in other cities as well. I know, like I said, they're nationwide. So I volunteered for them, started helping them with um, web design and, and social media and stuff like that. And they were extremely appreciative. Um, I mean, I, I have to admit it as a volunteer, it wasn't necessarily volunteering because it took up quite a bit of time. And, um, when they put me on and along with two others, those two people fell out and I stayed on and, and kept on going with it. Eventually I was, um, you know, part of the team. So it helps it, it ultimately. And, with me not even realizing it, it turned into an opportunity because when I stuck in there, they started passing clients my way. So um, it paid off uh, definitely with, with just being, trying to network and volunteer and doing good for a good nonprofit uh, naturally um, was helpful. Um, another instance of that was with a real estate company in town that uh, I went after. It probably took six months of just calling back, back and forth, being persistent. And they finally, signed up and I said, to, you know, when I felt that they weren't completely convinced, um, I said, hey, I'll, I'll, uh, if you sign up with our company, uh, we, we won't approach any other realtors in town. And um, that caught their attention. They said, sure. And I walked out there feeling really, really stupid about that because there's so much real estate in Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, but I said, okay, well, I went with my gut instinct and six months later, uh, the owner said, I appreciate your loyalty. Show up tomorrow to a, a broker's meeting. Um, I wanted to introduce you to the rest of that that real estate franchise for the rest of Texas and Oklahoma and and who knows the rest of the country. So me sticking with um, or being loyal to one brokerage without me realizing it got me more business. So I've I deeply believe in going with um, instincts and being uh, going after things and not such a sales mentality. Rather, what can you do to help somebody? And even in business, I do believe that that comes back to you somehow. Um, some people call that karma. Sometimes I have a hard time believing in karma, but call it what you will. I truly believe that, uh, and I'm not a salesperson. You know, I'm right. simply just somebody that was, I used, was on the ground uh, instead of in, in a leadership role at one point. And I, I appreciated um, what I've learned. And I, I feel like I should pass that on to um, other clients and I, I try to stick with things I enjoy you know, I have a few art uh, nonprofits um, a cleaning service where the person that I helped was literally cleaning themselves and now is just, just pretty much hiring trying to keep up with with uh, the clients that I brought them Excellent. I've got um, a brewery which is I lo of course love beer so that's that's a, a good that's a good one um, there's uh, attorneys are a big one I've got um, some in Houston, some in Austin, and looking to expand. Um, those are those I found were fairly difficult because you know you have these attorneys who have been around for years and have the huge budget and can throw thousands of dollars on ad campaigns and pay per click, and you have these younger guys who are just starting without that budget, and it's difficult. Um, and same with the real estate, by the way, they're extremely difficult in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because there's such there's bigger players out there that have an endless budget. So how do you get your your new client? You as a as a startup in a small company, how do you compare? Um, I my, the answer I think is creative. You have to be more creative, and more creative than that guy with the, with the, the endless budget. You know they're throwing money at all these companies and businesses that just stick to the routine. They don't get questioned about the bill that gets paid, and they're just going to give the bare minimum, you know, but when it comes to smaller businesses, you really have to figure out a way to be creative and get them, um, get them visible on the first page and, uh, with different keywords and different phrases and all kinds of, you know, I have no choice. You know, I don't have neither myself nor the clients I typically deal with have the endless budget. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I've found. Well, the great thing about this business is that there are opportunities always for the new companies coming in 
Uh, you know, there's a lot of gems out there that they can still find that brings traffic to their website. Some of these mm -hmm. big companies are only going after those big phrases, uh, which there might be more search volume there, but, you know, they leave some of the lesser ones uh, to the others. So, you, like you said, you just need to be creative and be able to find them and produce that content and, uh, you know, get the leads coming in. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Talk to me about um, you know what you do for these clients. Then what what are the main problems that uh, they have? Maybe a startup attorney or real estate. What problems do they have? Is it with the website SEO or is it a combination of everything? It's usually everything. Of course, the first thing I look at is the website. Uh, you know, as as most everyone knows in the industry, that's you can't. You know, you can't continue to apply most SEO methods if the website is, is a mess or if it's not um, set up for the foundation of uh, the future of SEO. Uh, so depending on where they are, you know, and sometimes it's good and bad that they, they don't have a website. You know, the, if they don't have a website, well, there's no authority and that's going to be difficult. If they do have a website, but it's had years of just trashy code and, and it's just all over the place, then now you've got that task. Um, so it varies. It just depends. I mean, there's all types of clients and I'm sure most of us have dealt with, you know, just, uh, both of those types, but, uh, that's where you have to start, you know, and usually I'll, I'll just have to start clean, you know, of course, keep the URLs and all the content, for, uh, and also, uh, their, their problem is, uh, lack of engagement in social media. You know, a lot of people think a lot of business owners, uh, will be like, well, Facebook is for, you know, people posting about their dinner. Um, that's not for me. And, um, you know, which is very much not the case. You just have to know how to engage with people. And that's the, what I believe is the future of, um, maybe not even the future, even now, uh, of, of SEO is, uh, social media engagement and, and, um, making the client understand that there's a connection. You know, it's not just about posting uh, random articles about, uh, what you think your your followers are looking at it's about creating content that's going to live on your website and then you share that stuff from the site which it's the game of traffic it's the game of bringing people back to the site and um, I'm also running into uh, a problem with certain clients that they they think oh we don't need a website nobody cares about that anymore and it's really frustrating because they don't get it um, you need that foundation regardless of all, all your people are on social media. You still need to be directing people back to the website for SEO reasons. Um, so it's, it's that pretty much game of content was what it comes down to in uh, creative and, and interesting content. And sometimes that's difficult. Uh, you know, I have a client that is using uh, something called a metabolic cart, which measures uh, athletes, you know, um, pulse and, and whatever's going on in their body to, during training and exercise and good luck trying to make an interesting article out of that. You know, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult. Um, so it's, when that happens, you have to really get into the business owner's head and, uh, you know, maybe have them get involved with content sometimes. And then you have other clients, um, that, you know, like my art clients that have, um, you know, a, a um, an event happening at a, at a popular spot in downtown Austin, you know, you put an ad out there for that and it's just naturally going to happen. You're going to sell the place out. So, um, it, it just varies and you have to make, you have to find a way to make a not interesting industry industry into something interesting. Um, you know, and for example, the attorneys, can, you know, most people don't want to hear about legal battles or things like that, but Hey, what city do they live in? What, what's going on in that city? Uh, what what about living in a city that like Austin or, or somewhere uh, like that that's pushing for something like legalizing marijuana? Well, there you go. Put a put a post about legalizing weed in, in on the the attorney's uh, blog, and there you go. And now you have all these people that smoke weed looking and reading reading a post. You know, so it's really uh, going back to what I said, which is being creative. Now, how much time is involved from the actual client in regards to uh, generating content like that as well as responding to the social media? 
It depends. Uh, you know, like back to the attorney, they they have to approve uh, the the content. So there's that. You know, sometimes it doesn't make the cut, and we have to go back and create that article again. And then there's others that it's just they don't care what you post. They trust you. They know what you're doing, and you maintain that uh, those social media channels. Uh, and you know, just providing that content. And now another thing a lot of clients don't understand um, that we do in the industry is things like web 2.0 sites and other social media channels that nobody cares about, um, you know, and un making them understand that every bit of content is important. Even if we're posting it on these sites, 2.0 sites that nobody looks at, I mean, it's just for the bots, basically it's for SEO. Um, and there's so much out there to, to feed content into that, uh, that it's come down to that's the most important thing um, is the content. So um, it varies. Like I said, there's some involvement with some clients that have to see it because it's because of legal reasons um, and others that just pretty much trust us to provide it for them. And, and going back to, they don't care, just bring us the leads type of stuff. So there's so much content out there now, uh, too much content, I would say. And it's very hard to, you know, get people's attention nowadays. How do you make your content stand out that is going to get the attention of the right people? Uh, I mean, interesting topics, kind of going back to the one I mentioned about legalizing marijuana. There's, that's always going to be a, a popular topic until unless it happens. Um, but what I'm noticing now is everybody's going towards video. Um, people taking or using the Facebook um, go live option where they're, on location and now you're doing a live feed. Um, another thing that um, we're starting to really look into is Instagram ads that pop up on people's um, stories. You know, that's where I see everything going uh, and more so than Facebook eventually is. And I'm sure you've seen it where you're watching people with their 10 second clip video clips and right in between that an ad pops up. Mm. Um, so that's, that's going to be the way um, to, to uh, get in front of, the uh, newer potential leads and that's where everybody's headed it's going away from unfortunately people don't want to read many articles anymore it's just that's what's happening with the technology with video and instagram um so it's just keeping up you know it's having to keep up with things and, and making sure you're on top of um what's what's demanded of us from things like google like the like just this past year i think maybe it was the end of last year this year was the whole um SSL, you know, all of a sudden you better change your site to, to have a protocol or, you know, your competitor is going to be above you on page one if you do it. So it's a combination, you know, now we're, now we're talking about the technical things, but it's also, you also have to be on top of the um, social media thing as well. Right. And there's different aspects of SEO. You've got the, the technical that you were speaking of. It seems like Google is really wanting that technical foundation done right and rewards the sites that have it and you know maybe penalizes the sites that don't is that what you're seeing oh definitely i mean i've even gone to um there are some seminars here that uh score austin will have and it brings all the the top guys from google uh, where you have this opportunity to sit in a, in a large conference room and ask them the, the most important questions. And um, what it is, it, it's, there's methods and, 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 uh, or rules they have in place that you either follow or, or you don't or you get doctors. Uh, and that's just one of those things I don't question because you can't. I mean, you either do it or, or you you're behind your competitors. So, but I found that that used to be a headache, uh, uh, more so than what I'm facing now with challenges with uh, social media campaigns, um, and trying to figure those things out. Aud target audiences, you know, that's, you know, that's the new uh, SEO, or not SEO exactly, but I think that's the new type of marketing that we're headed into, um, more more than technical things like protocols and and. HTTPS, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about competition right now. And uh, how do you evaluate the competitors and look to find those areas where you know that you can get a win for your client? Uh, well, I mean, with all the tools they have now where you 
just kind of plug it in and see what the, their competitors doing, what keywords they're going after. Um, also, the tools that tell you um, just how competitive those phrases are, uh, how much the, the cost per click is, and just kind of kind of letting you know what to stay away from with with uh, what type of budget you're dealing with. You know, you don't want to uh, have your your clients have these huge expectations for a, a highly competitive keyword phrase because then they're not going to be happy and eventually they're not going to see any results and then you're you're both unhappy with each other and you lose a client so um i i'm extremely grateful for those tools that we have that show us exactly what not to go after as you know as a smaller business well, what kind um, of tools do you use uh, i used to use something called seo power suite uh link assistant it was something like that and they were extremely affordable uh extremely i mean i think i was getting it for like 20 bucks a month after I paid the few, you know, two or $300 initially. Mm. Um, and then I recently within the last six months moved over to SEM rush. Um, and with them, I was, I didn't know who to go with because also a href, um, is really impressive. They find things that I don't find anywhere else. Um, so those are my two favorites, uh, SEM rush and, and a href, but I would highly recommend with a lower budget to go after SEO, PowerSuite, Link Assistant. Um, the, the only reason I left from them was um, you had to pay quite a bit for reporting tools, and um, those became important for my, for my clients. So I just gave up and went with something a little more pricey, which is SEM Rush, and, and that gives some really nice reporting tools. Right. Uh, it seems SEM Rush and Ahrefs are the kind of industry standard that's, you mm -hmm. know, people usually love one or the other or both. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're definitely great tools to figure out exactly uh, ex what you're going to be able to rank for. So talk to yeah. me about some of the misconceptions around the SEO industry. What do you hear from your clients that uh, might not be the truth? Uh, well, it, unfortunately, there are a lot of SEO companies out that um, create these misconceptions. Uh, you know, I, I've recently got a man who was he extremely hesitant on hiring us because of his, because he's hired SEO companies before, and he's, he was literally saying, I've tried this many times, and I get nothing out of it. Um, and I think there are companies out there that will just outsource and just you know, uh, just spend on the very minimal and not really, and just kind of hope and cross their fingers that that client doesn't call them and ask them, Hey, well, what happened this month? Uh, um, but there are just like with anything else, there's are good SEO companies out there. Um, I just think it's a matter of uh, the connection you have with that company when you sign up, feeling them out and trying to figure out if that's just a salesperson on the other line, or are you actually talking to a business owner? Um, if, if, will that business owner have, you know, meet you in person for lunch, you know, to, for you to feel that out, feel out that connection. Um, and just like with anything else, uh, I think a personal connection and getting those vibes and feeling that person out will determine, um, if you're going to get a good SEO company or not. Um, and you know, if, if possible, um, try to stay local. You know, I'm trying to expand, of course, my business uh, to expand outside of Austin. But if, if at all, I would say if you're trying your first SEO company, why not keep it, you know, where you can have a cup of coffee with that business owner or upper management um, that will sit down and show you what's going on. What, what are their methods? Will you um, I think that will, you know, um, get past that misconception. Mm. Yeah, I definitely think that makes a big difference, uh, feeling somebody out in person uh, rather than trusting them over the phone or even on Skype or a Zoom call like this. Yeah. Um, and with SEO, when you're telling somebody, hey, it might be six to 12 months before you get any results, it could be quite easy to string you know, somebody down the road and say, well, yeah. yeah. They quit after six, eight months, and you had a client for six, eight months. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot of fear in this industry, but there's also a lot of good companies out there that do outstanding work. 
Uh, sure. Talk to me about some of the results that you've had for your clients. <clears throat> um, really great results. Um, I'm seeing, uh, especially, you know, stuff like uh, moving companies and, and cleaning service. Um, the moving company was literally me uh, having dinner and going out for watch a game and have a beer. And there was a guy next to me uh, that, that, you know, we, we introduced ourselves and, and he's, I said, how's it going? He said, eh, well, I'm, I'm only here because me and my wife got to do a fight. You know, she's, she's uh, not happy about, um, what I'm doing right now and, and I wish I could just start my own business and do my own thing and just really frustrated. I said, well, hey man, what's, what's keeping you from doing that? Like, honestly, what's keeping you from doing that? I said, do you have the experience in, in doing or creating a moving company? He said, yeah, sure. I've been doing it for years. I said, well, I mean, give it a shot. You know, you don't have to quit your job. You know, it's that thing where you don't quit your job until you have another one. Um, and I said, I'll help you out. You know, I'll, I'll, go easy on the price. You know, if it's, if it's a, a, you know, I know you're kind of struggling right now, obviously, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And he, he did, he uh, probably two or three months later, he said, Hey, remember me? Um, I'm, you know, we met and you told me to start my own business and I'm doing it and I could use your help. And I said, okay, I'll help you, you know, uh, for extremely reasonable price right now. Uh, but just remember this when you start, when you get bigger. And uh, he said, sure. And sure enough, he's, um, He's doing great right now. He's doesn't have, probably doesn't even have time to talk to me anymore. What is what it seemed like? He's mm -hmm. so busy. Um, another one was a cleaning service where uh, this person needed some help uh, growing the business, and she would show up to meetings flustered and and had just finished cleaning the place. And um, you know, eight or nine months later, she started showing up and you know nicely dressed and said, "I'm hiring now." And um, she said, "It's gotten to the point where I even have to turn stuff down." You know, she said PetSmart called me the other day because I, I had uh, set up a, a keyword phrase for her as for um, commercial and retail uh, cleaning service. And uh, she said PetSmart called me and they, they wanted me to start this week and clean all their PetSmarts in Austin uh, twice a week. And I, I, it was impossible. I couldn't do it. Uh, and I said, well, I'm not really happy to hear that, but um, I guess that's a compliment. <laughs> you know, it's, um, but you should probably figure out now at this stage how to, how to, higher for, for uh, instances like that. So these are success stories uh, well, are that's, people that have helped, you know? Yeah, that's tremendous, Chris. Uh, you know, the, the great thing I like about talking to people like yourself is you're putting yourself in a position to help people to make businesses. Uh, marketing is definitely an integral part of any business. You've got to be found, you've got to be seen, uh, and to have somebody that is able to help in that regard is exactly what uh, all business owners need. Uh, one other thing, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Frank Kern. He's been around the digital marketing business for uh, many, many years. One of his phrases is, you know, you demonstrate uh, how you can help people by actually helping them. <laughs> You know, yeah, and then they stick with you, and that's really what it seems like you have been doing is really putting yourself out there and offering to help, and you're getting rewarded for it. Sure, so, love to uh, love to hear that. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope I hope to I hope never come to businesses that doesn't no longer puts their phone number out there. By the way, that's extremely frustrating. Um, you know, the where where you get too big that you can't uh, answer a phone or or offer twenty four seven support. Uh, I, I'm, that's frustrating. So I hope to never, uh, this is a recording. I hope to never become that business. <laughs> right. Well, if somebody is listening to this, Chris, and wants to reach out to you for help in their marketing, whether it's web design or SEO or social media or any of the other services that you offer, what is the best way for them to do that? Sure. Uh, you could, of course, go to our site, I see you now, which is once again spelled E Y E S E E. Y O U N O W dot com. It, it's all what it sounds like, except for the first word, which is E Y E. Um, and also info at ICU now dot com. Um, and from there, you could probably find out um, other ways to call to contact us. Our number is 512 370 4078. Um, there's also a chat option on the website um, if, if you prefer that. Excellent. Well, we got a lot of uh, great information from you today. Chris is Chris Ornelas. He's the owner of ICU Now in Austin, Texas. Thank you very much for being my guest on the Trust Factor Radio today.
All right. Thank you. And to our listening audience, if you like what you hear, hit that like button and share, and we'll see you next time on the show. You've been listening to the Trust Factor Radio with Neil Howe. To learn about the resources mentioned in the show and to listen to past episodes, go to thetrustfactorradio.com. To get a copy of the book, The Trust Factor, go to thetrustfactorbook.com. If you are ready to act now and build your authority, credibility, and trust, schedule a consultation with Neil at theauthorityarchitect.com.